Hello and welcome to episode 111 of the Crochet Cakes podcast, yarn review and stash chat. Today is my 111th birthday. Alas, 111 years is far too short a time to live among such excellent and admirable hobbits. Hello, I hope that you are doing well and that you've been taking care of yourself. Uh, it's been a while since I last sat to have a proper podcast with you guys, but uh, just, you know, general life things have been happening and my brother-in-law is visiting us for a week and I honestly do not feel comfortable podcasting in front of um, family members. I mean, unless they're my mother who, you know, used to podcast with me. So I just waited for a chance when my husband and his brother are just doing some manly bonding things and I can have the house to myself for at least an hour so that I can have a wonderful crafty chat with you because I, I've missed you guys. Yeah, I've missed just the general atmosphere that we can create just chatting to one another about crafts and thank you for everyone who chats with me through the comment section because you know it makes it feel like an actual community and I'm communicating with fellow human crafters instead of just uh, a camera and then an editing software. <laughs> So yes, in this episode, we're going to review some yarns and have a stash chat. Uh, in the last episode, if you remember, we were talking about all the projects that have been stashed away in my little whip corner. And even though I haven't worked on a single one of them, I have plans moving forward with them that you may or may not agree with and you might try to talk me out of, but I think that they just have to be done. I know that we are headed into colder weather, at least my friends in the northern north hemisphere, uh, my friends in the southern hemisphere and in the tropics will of course be saying, what cooler weather? And I agree. I, I have no idea what cooler weather is. It's uh, If it's having the heat index be below 100 degrees, then yes, that's cooler weather for me. If it's having gorgeous weather of 72 degrees, which by the way is already <clears throat> sweater weather as far as I'm concerned, then no, no, not even close, no, just, no. Having said that, I just thought we'd start our chat with some yarn reviews on the latest yarns that I've used for some of my designs. And I thought we could start off with some cotton blend yarns because as you know, I live in Florida and I use a lot of cotton and cotton blend yarns because they're what I can wear. As much as I would love to wear wool in a hundred degree heat, I, I, that not made, I have a finer constitution than that. Tell me, like, tell me, do you, what must the weather be in Fahrenheit or Celsius for you to stop using wool? I'm curious because I can use wool in like 72 degrees if, you know, um, I'm in the shade and there's a light breeze. I can I can manage that, but uh, 80s? No, no. So anyway, because of this, I thought I would share the yarn review of the latest cotton yarns that I have used in some of my designs. Actually, yeah, we're going to be talking about my designs today. And then when we moved to the stash chat, then I thought we could just, you know, have a little chat about what we're doing in the moment. So I'm going to be reviewing these yarns for comfort, durability, pilling, general wear and tear, and just how I felt working with them, how they crocheted up for me, and how they've, you know, been wearing and tearing, as I said. And I also mentioned that these are yarns that I've already been using in my designs, but you know when you design something, it's you have a specific yarn in mind and you use that, but how does that wear after, you know, and for example, the top that I'm wearing, which I will be reviewing the yarn for today, is the flower tile top. I believe I released this in April and it is now October, mid-October to be precise. So yeah, it's been a while of me using this top and I thought 
it's about time you did a little review on this yarn because I don't just feel comfortable recommending a yarn and then not, you know, upholding my end of the bargain of saying, hey, this is how, what's happened with it so far. Would I still use it again? Things like that. So as I've already introduced this top, let's start with the flower tile top. Um, I'm going to be inserting some footage so that you guys can see closer up how these items move as I wear them and, you know, walk, just general stuff like that. So this top is crocheted using Shine Sport. It is a yarn by We Crochet for um, Knit Picks and it is a cotton blend yarn. The blend is 60% modal and 40% Pima cotton. I'll be, of course, including all the links to everything I talk about in the description box below. So please do not hesitate to check that out and uh, see what I'm... Literally see with your own eyes what I'm talking about. So the what I like about purchasing yarns for wig crochet or knit picks is that they include little uh, descriptions of what the yarn is, what the colors are, what the tones of the colors are, and not all yarn companies do that, and that is something that I can very much appreciate because as we all know, when we're looking at a computer screen, what I see on my screen and what you see on your screen might not be entirely accurate as to the piece when we receive it. You know, it just depends on the lighting, the settings, and all that stuff. So I really, really appreciate that Knit Picks goes through, or We Crochet, goes through the trouble of writing up these descriptions as well as color descriptions. So for the shine, sorry, I have hair keeps falling. This is why I rarely have my hair down. It's because it keeps falling in my mouth and <laughs> anyway, so the website describes Shine Sport as being, as I said, a modal and Pima cotton blend. And what this means is that the modal will give it that shine that you can see. You can really see clearly how I'm sitting right now, the shine that this yarn has, and that is an, an expensive version of silk. Essentially, it, I'm sorry, it's not an inexpensive version of silk. It's a substitute for silk if you're looking for some of the qualities that silk has in terms of the shine, luxuriousness, and softness of um, the yarn, then modal is pretty decent. But what exactly is modal? So, it is a reconstituted cellulose fiber from beech trees. And I'm reading off of my notes because some of this stuff, guys, will not fit in here in like three seconds. So reading off of that, it is 50% more absorbent than cotton and it is color fast. It is stronger, durable, and lighter than other alternatives such as rayon or viscose. Um, and that is where we are with the modal. So in summary, it's a semi-synthetic fiber blend that it's very breathable and it has resistance to shrinkage and pilling. Now, having said that, how does this yarn compare to silk, if for example you're interested in that? Well, price-wise, Modal is definitely more affordable than silk. Obviously, as I've just stated, silk is a semi-synthetic, I mean, Modal is a semi-synthetic fiber and silk is a natural fiber, so that is also something to consider. But what I mean by being more affordable is that, for example, this Shine Sport is $3.99 per 50 gram ball versus a price range of between $6.50 to $10.50 for, say, a papyrus from Fibro Natura. Um, the percentage, as I've said, is 60-40 modal cotton versus a 78-22 um, cotton silk for the papyrus from Fibro Natura. And I think that makes them a little bit comparable because other yarns will say cotton blends, but there'll be a cotton, viscose, silk, and things like that. So the papyrus from Fibro Natura is just simply a cotton silk blend, which I think is more honest comparison to the Shine Sport because the Shine Sport is simply a modal cotton, cotton blend. There's no other fibers in there. Um, although I do have to say that... Uh, 
I've never worked with the papyrus from Fibro Natura, but just from my screen, it looked like an exquisite yarn to work with. In terms of what silk provides to the fiber and what uh, the modal provides to the fiber. I've already told you a little bit of the modal, but for the silk, uh, when silk is wet, it's extremely delicate. So that's a little bit of a con when you're trying to, you know, have silk in your everyday wardrobe. But it is particularly a durable fiber. It's just when it's wet, it's at its weakest. Contrary to the modal, it's very strong. In terms of environmental friendliness and things like that, I'll leave the links down below so that you guys can come up with your own conclusions to that. I'm just here to review this yarn. So having, you know, gone a little bit over what the components of this yarn are fiber-wise, how did it feel to crochet with? It was gorgeous to crochet with. It's very slick, it slides through your finger, it feels luxurious next to the skin. Like, I love wearing this top just because I find it to be a very comfortable top to wear. It feels weightless, it's very light. It's a perfect summer um, yarn for me. And I bet if I would have crocheted long sleeves or, you know, not had an open fillet stitch on the front, it would have definitely been a transitional yarn for me as we transition from 100 degrees to 70 degrees. I mean, I, I'm not talking about transitioning from um, the 90s to the 50s. I mean, layers always work. But in terms of my experience working with this yarn, uh, I wouldn't classify it as a sport weight necessarily. The yardage to me seems more like a DK weight yarn and I did use a four millimeter hook to crochet this top up and I didn't have any problems with it. I thought um, the double crochet still hit enough of the body even though you know I was using a four millimeter crochet hook. In terms of The yarn twist, I think the yarn has a very low twist. And also, even though the description boasts of it being anti-pilling, um, there is halo to this yarn from the places where it's rubbed most, so under the area of the arms. I don't want to make it awkward but like giving you a zoom on my armhole area, but um, you can kind of see Look, I just pulled it off. So there's been some pilling here. And uh, the breast area as well, because I'd like to wear this top with overalls. So where the jeans rub against the fabric, it's also been a bit of pit pilling. It doesn't really look like little globs of fabric. It looks more like a halo. So just gently brushing it with a cleaner, it takes care of that. And I don't honestly mind it. Um, places, as I said, where the top rubs um, a lot against materials such as jeans, purses, your hands. They do have a halo and yeah you can see that there, right? So is that really a con for me? I can't, I can't say that it is. I greatly enjoy wearing this as I said. I think the pros for me outweigh the pilling cons. I have not machine washed this. I, I'm sort. I'm gentle with some of the items I crochet just because I want them to keep looking a certain way. So in terms of sweaters, I'll chuck them in the washing machine, no questions asked, just because you want sweaters to be comfortable and the like, unless you purposely crocheted a crop tight fitting sweater, then you may not want to put it in the washing machine. But you guys hopefully understand where I'm going with this. I greatly enjoyed working with this yarn. I would work with this yarn again and I I really love how it feels against the skin. Another thing that I like to keep in mind with this yarn is that weaving in ends is a little bit of a nightmare. Because the yarn is so slick, the ends tend to just randomly pop out here and there. So I have to find myself just um, every once in a while making sure like for example, I already feel it, it's right here, right? that I've woven that end in multiple times and it still just kind of pops out and says hello often enough that you can find it a little bit annoying but maybe it's just uh, requires more attention to the weaving in of ends than I maybe addressed when I wove in my ends because you guys 
all know that I don't like weaving in ends. Raise your hands if you are part of the no woven, no ends woven in club. Yes. I don't think I'm its president, but I'm definitely a member. Proud? I don't know. I'll leave that for you to determine if it's proud or not, but I'm definitely a participating member of that club. So as I said, the links to the sources where I found the um, description of modal and uh, the We Crochet website that will all be linked down below. Now another yarn that I've worked with and I've worn enough that I feel comfortable giving you an honest review is Comfy Color Mist. Now this yarn is also a cotton blend yarn as I promised. It is a worsted weight, 219 grams, 219 yards per 100 grams. And it is 75% Pima cotton, 25% acrylic. So unlike the Shine Sport, which I am wearing in this top, it is um, acrylic and not modal or another type of reconstituted cellulose like bamboo, for example. So where did I use this yarn? So I used this yarn to crochet the Summer Breeze top. And this is a tank top, a muscle top, a vest, a waistcoat, whatever you call it where you are from. It is a sleeveless top that is meant to be worn on its own or um, over a shirt to layer and look just as fabulous. I uh, use the color Inchworm if you're interested and it basically, um, it's like a bit of an earthy, springy green mixed in with whites and you've got some of the speckles and some longer splotches of color for this yarn. So what can I tell you about this um, yarn? I've used it about as much as I've used the shirt that I'm wearing. In terms of length of time, probably not, but I do gear towards this one quite a bit, so I feel I've used it more often than the um, flower child top that I'm wearing. I've used it mostly as a layering piece, so not on its own like I've been using this top. And this in the website, the Comfy Cotton Mist is described as adding a soft and subtle texture to even the simplest of stitches. It's made with a popular comfy worsted base. Acrylic microfiber gives elasticity to this lightweight, long wearing machine washable yarn. Now, once again, I, I have not machine washed this, but it has been wet blocked. If you are familiar with the Summer Breeze pattern or if you dabbled in making it, then you know that we crochet um, or ver vertically instead of horizontally to get the stretch to be horizontal instead of vertical. Did that make any sense? What I'm trying to say, so I guess we're crocheting vertically. Yes, yeah, so we're crocheting vertically. Um, is that so what I mean is that instead of crocheting side to side, we're crocheting top to bottom, so we're crocheting vertically, and that creates um, or gives the fabric that you're making a width-wise stretch instead of length-wise stretch, which is always my goal when I'm making um, waistcoats or tank tops because I like a form-fitting one. Now this one is not necessarily form-fitting, and as I said, I haven't machine washed it, but I did wet block it. Comparing it to the uh, Sport Shine Sport, this one feels more lightweight than this one does. But also, this one is meant to be a Sport DK weight blend, and this is a worsted weight blend of yarn. So for being a worsted weight yarn, I think it's pretty lightweight, and honestly, it's worn really well. Um, there is a little bit of the halo, mostly around the underarm area, which would be expected in this case because you know under the arm is where most of the um, friction would be occurring with this top. I really liked this yarn um, so I think that just because this is a comfy mist base 
doesn't mean that what I'm saying won't apply to all the other comfy bases. I have worked with their comfy fingering and I did find that the top that I have with that uh, was peeling quite a bit. But I think, I'm not sure if that's either the acrylic or the Pima cotton because Pima cotton is supposed to be a long strand of cotton, like the Egyptian cotton. That's why they are on the higher end of the cotton scale because having these long strands of fiber will um, encourage a more uniform strand of yarn. Yes, and therefore it should minimize peeling. Have I found that to be true? No, not, not particularly, if I'm being quite honest. But again, I do not know if that is because it is a Pima cotton blend yarn or if it's because of the type of twist or things like that. I do have another 100% Pima cotton in my stash that's just 100% Pima cotton. I've just never used it to make a garment, so I don't want to include it in this review. Now, um, in terms of comfort, I give it a 10 out of 10. It is a very comfortable yarn to work with, very comfortable to wear, uh, and I just, I like it. In terms of its softness, it's very soft. Obviously, comparing it to the Modal Pima Cotton, the Modal Pima Cotton just, just feels more luxurious because of that beech wood fiber and Honestly, you kind of want to spend more time petting it than you do the Comfy Color Mist. The Comfy Color Mist next to the Pima Cotton Moda Blend feels a little more rustic. It is not. This is not like something I would use in my kitchen accessories or anything like that. It is beautiful and perfectly great for making a garment or a shawl or anything you want to wear and keep close to your body. In terms of drape, you guys saw that the Pima Cotton drapes really, really well. So if you're trying to go for a top that has a little bit more structure, the Comfy Color Mast has more structure than the Shine Sport. Um, it is very lightweight and even though it does have a little bit of drape, like I've said, you can see how it falls here it doesn't have the drape of say this shine sport blend or a cotton bamboo bamboo blend so um in terms of durability i feel that this comfy color is more durable than the pima cotton moda blend not in terms of fiber strength i haven't i haven't tested that one but in terms of how much of a halo I have wearing this top versus wearing one made with comfy color mist. I do have to say once again that this has been a layering piece. Uh, I haven't used it so much on its own, but I feel when you layer, you actually kind of abuse your clothes more because they're constantly rubbing against other pieces of fiber that will get form friction and you know will have give it more of a halo. So just to review, this comfy color mist has a halo around the armhole area. You can see where I've constantly used it. It has that halo. And this one has a halo, honestly more of a uniform halo. It's got pilling under the arms, but uh, I get that with wool yarns as well, so it's not concerning. It's got pilling on the breast area because of I uh, like using it with, with overalls and having that just constantly rubbing there. And it also has pilling at the waist because I either use this top inside, uh, high waist jeans or things like that. So again, a uh, lot of halo-y stuff going on where the top will rub against other fabrics. Those are it for some of the latest yarns that I've used. I also, I've also used, you know, if you've been watching my channel and you've been following along with the patterns that I've released, I released a cardigan and it was a cotton bamboo blend. I do feel that I've talked about that blend quite a bit. You guys know it's a favorite of mine because of just the feel of it against your skin. 
Now, if we're gonna compare a cotton bamboo blend with the Shine Sport blend, which is a Modal Pima Cotton, I think I prefer the Modal Pima Cotton, to be honest. But bamboo does have beautiful, beautiful drape, which can be annoying if you're trying to make a stiff collar, like I tried to make for the vintage Echo cardigan, or um, does provide a lot more stretch over time than some of your cottons. And other things to remember as well is that all of these fibers behave differently. So once your cotton stretches, it's pretty much going to stay that way. It's not going to um, shrink back, like have that memory that wool has. So if you have any questions or if you would like to hear anything else about other yarns that maybe I've used that you would like to give me a thorough, you would like me to give a thorough review on, then please comment and let me know. Have you guys worked with these yarns before? What do you think of a modal cotton blend and if not a cotton acrylic blend? A uh, cotton acrylic blend, I think it's a blend that's pretty common. I know I have several of them in my stash, so if you would be interested in hearing how different uh, brands work up in a cotton acrylic blend and how they wear, then definitely also let me know, and I would love to share that with you. Honestly, I just, I love catching up and talking to you guys, so the more the merrier, right? Now, I did promise you a little stash chat, and I have not worked on any of the stash things that I said I would work, but I have come to some conclusions of, of, on them, if you will. So in keeping with the cotton acrylic theme, um, living in my lovely Hanmei by Yael bag, I have what used to be a project that I was going to dedicating a lot of time to. It's a shawl. And I shared this with you last time and I said I was going to rip it back. I just, I haven't ripped it back, but I do like it. So maybe instead of ripping it back, I should just kind of like write it up and have you guys decide if you want to make it or not. Mm. It's very simple, very fun, very potato chip, I guess. Uh, but talking about yarn I don't know if the camera will pick up I can't get the camera to pick up the halo on this nitpicks comfy fingering in the color ivory so this is the same base as the comfy color mist it's just solid um, yarns solid colors um, so I'll just do a little video and share that with you separately but this is going to get to the frog maybe I don't know I feel bad frogging things which is why one of you asked how I'm going along with the oh my god the spicier life blanket I'm not, I'm not going along it's I haven't worked on it in a long time do I want to frog it no because I bought all the yarn for it and I know it's going to be a lovely yarn yarn blanket by the end of it uh but I think what I might have to do is take a break from designing, which sounds detrimental to my business, but I might have to take a break from designing to clear the boards and just work on everything that I've got that's not my own design and finish it because it does weigh on my soul, I have to be honest. And the other uh, item on the list for stash chat that I'm going to share with you is the as if tea <laughs> and sorry that I'm pausing and like taking such I don't mean to be mysterious but uh, this is gonna get the frog so that should happen very soon I just don't like uh, the way I was working up no that's a lie what I don't like is what I did at the very beginning of mixing the DK weight yarn with uh, fingering weight yarn to kind of crochet, uh, sorry, knit the base because it's giving us a very weird tucking up on the rib and that drives me insane whenever I'm working with this top. So it's not so much the fact that I used um, 
lace weight yarn together with the DK weight yarn all throughout, just kind of trying to stash bust. I don't mind that that much. I think that's actually pretty cool. So I will keep that. What I don't like is the very beginning where I combined the fingering weight with the DK weight. It, uh, I think it formed, in my case, anyway, my tension with knitting, uh, I would say heavy worsted. Uh, but I just, yeah, I want to frog that back. And I'm actually just thinking of frogging it back to the point where um, I started combining the lace weight, casting on again, and just literally casting on, not doing a rib, and potentially just doing a crochet rib later. I don't know, but I do know that I want to frog it. I will feel very good after frogging it and starting it again. And I also know that I should do that very, very soon. So in terms of crochet chat, that is what I have to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed my yarn review. Um, I put a lot of thought into things that maybe you'd be interested in hearing about in terms of the yarns that I use because I don't know about you, but I definitely appreciate seeing the truth behind the yarn as it were because yarns are lovely and we love them and we cherish them. But sometimes they don't work up quite like we expect them to. So now I want to hear what you now I want to hear what you have to say. Do you like cotton acrylic blends yarns? Have you used a Modal Pima cotton blend yarn? What is your favorite cotton yarn blend? I want you to tell me and I want to know if I've tried it. Let me know if you'd be interested in hearing any more about my cotton yarn experience or if you'd rather I review other yarn blends that I've used and just let's chat, okay? I miss having crafty friends. I missed literally talking to you guys. And please don't forget that if you want to hear more about, uh, forget that if you want to chat more with me, then check out my Instagram page. I'm very active there. I have to say, I try to upload stories uh, at least every day just to spend some time with you. So yeah, that's definitely a possibility. You can also feel free to message me, email me, any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you just need a personal cheerleader. I love cheering people on with their projects. No lie, no exaggeration. That is something I really like to do. So the other things that I quickly want to mention before I sign off today is, uh, don't forget the stash bust no, sorry. The Stashed Over 21 Cal is a cal, lovely cal for stash busting projects where you choose yarn from your stash and you make a project from one of the participating designers and share it. Please share it. Share it on Instagram. Tag me on Instagram. Also check out Ravelry and share it there. The Hannah of the Cozy Cottage Crochet is the one responsible for the thread and check that out. And if you would still like to participate in Stashtober 21, then please do so. I've released a new pattern for you, which also falls in with Socktober, and it is the squared root socks. They are a simple colorwork sock that you can work up, and there's a video tutorial to guide you along the way. The video tutorial is only included with the, the paid purchase of the paid for PDF, but if you think that's a huge commitment, then you can check out the free pattern on my website so you can have an idea of how I write stuff up. And yeah. And yeah, that is it for Stash Tober, so moving on. I realize that I, I'm not a proper YouTuber at all because October, almost the end of it, and have I shared any spooky content with you? No. Do I have something special prepared? I like to think so. It's in the works. It's a little vlog about my Halloween costume and we're making a part, two parts of it together. So if you're interested in that, then it will be coming your way. I have, I think I'm trying to schedule it all to have everything finished, edited, and uploaded by the 28th of October. 
October. So you can look forward to that. And I actually hope you look forward to that. Please look, also let me know what you're going to be for Halloween. Do you have any Halloween plans? Or are you more of a Halloween person? I'm definitely a Halloween person. I like to mix my little spooks with my pumpkins. Yeah. If you like, I hope you're adding some pumpkin spice to your life and I will see you in my next video. So happy crafting guys. Bye.